A few weeks ago, I got hit up to shoot the NFL draft. Now, if you know me, I'm a straight up sports junkie. And so this was one of those moments where I kind of had to pinch myself a little bit because it's really cool. And the draft is something that I wouldn't necessarily go to unless I was working it. So to be paid and flown out to shoot something like the draft is pretty surreal, but not everything was necessarily perfect about it. So we've been walking for about 20 minutes now and uh, we just figured out we have to walk all the way to the top of this hill. Stage is behind me. These are the glamorous parts of these quote unquote coal shoots. <laughs> these are the fun parts. The NFL draft is one of those things where what happens that night in those couple of nights could legit change all of sports history. There could be players drafted that end up becoming all time greats. And with that, the footage I'm capturing could be remembered forever. Now that is a long shot, but just think about it. If one of these guys becomes the next Tom Brady, I got footage of the next Tom Brady being drafted. But for something like this, it's not all about the draft. It's also about what surrounds the draft, the fan experience, and the different events that happen within the grounds of the draft. So part of my shot list is to get wide shots and a variety of shots of every single activation. So right now, I'm making a loop around this entire place, trying to get a little bit of everything so I can have a good start point and know over the next two days, whenever we're in the edit, it's just gonna be pickup shots. This is the most I'm going to shoot over the next few days. Obviously, I'll be shooting the draft later, but when it comes to the activations, this is the heavy lifting. So about an hour and a half walking around, getting a little bit of everything, different jerseys, different fans, trying to cover all my bases. With this, it comes down to coming up with an idea and a concept of what the video is actually going to be. So knowing that I have to capture the event as a whole. Yeah, there's cool moments whenever the players are getting drafted, but that is really less than half of what actually goes on at an event like this. We want to show the different aspects of it, the different fans that traveled in from out of town, the different pop-ups, the sponsors that are there. Show the entire thing, because at the end of the day, the video that I am hired to be there to shoot is for the NFL to go out there, pitch to other brands, to then potentially have them sponsor next year's draft. As simple as that. I have to constantly remind myself that there's much more than the players being drafted, even though that's the part that I was most excited for personally. Happy day two. So today is the second and third round of the draft. The craziness is over for the draft all the excitement the initial fan reactions but we still have to get a lot today right now i'm focusing once again on the activations headed over to the play 60 area this morning i cut together an edit for bryce young uh not for him it was of bryce young getting drafted first overall yesterday so uh that ended up getting picked up and the team that i'm with really liked it and now i'm editing one of those probably for each of the top five draft picks. So when it comes to over delivering, that is something that's helped me a ton throughout growing my career. You wanna over deliver. I wasn't asked to edit anything, but I did it. Cool thing is I can post it for my social, but now they want it too. And the NFL social team might pick it up as well. Over delivering is something that has been absolutely massive for me growing my business and gaining the trust of new clients who I might be working for for the first time. For example, Tooth & Melody, the company that hired me to be here at the draft, also hired me for Lollapalooza last year, which is the first place that I ever worked for them. At Lollapalooza, I was only hired to shoot and deliver raw footage. I would deliver the raw footage, but on my own time, since I was allowed to post it, I went ahead and I made edits, which proved that I could edit. Fast forward a couple months, I get hired by the same client to shoot ACL, Austin City Limits in Austin, Texas, another music festival. They then asked me to do some edits for Tito's, one of the brands that they're shooting for at that festival. So on top of the tasks that I've been hired to shoot and the edits that I've been hired to do, I typically, when I'm allowed, I will make edits for my own personal pages. Now, this was a perfect example of what happened at the NFL draft. At the draft, I was not supposed to really do any editing, but I decided it would be a good idea to make an edit for Bryce Young of him getting drafted. He was the number one overall pick, so why not? 
These are not something that I was necessarily hired to do, but over delivering is exactly what I did there. Not really on purpose and it's beautiful because it's mutually beneficial. I'll use those edits for my page. They can also use it for theirs. Bam, bam, makes everybody's life easier. But I just wanna harp on this one more time. Do not make stuff for your own Instagram and post it on your own social channels if you haven't run it by them yet. All it's gonna do is ruin your relationship. But right now, getting the activations, and uh, yeah, we're gonna move on as the day goes. Probably cut together a couple more of those edits for the other four draft picks, and um, we'll see how the day goes after that. One of the things that I do right away, once I get my shot list, I say, all right, are there any appearances or time sensitive things happening? If not, then I just go straight down the list. If there are, well then you gotta make sure you strategically are in those places at certain times. So if you need general shots of that tent with nothing going on, maybe you get those 20 minutes before the event actually happens, because then you don't have to walk over, walk back. At festivals, you might be walking a mile over to the other side of the grounds. If you can save yourself the steps, it'll make life a lot easier. I actually took 40,000 steps my first time shooting Lollapalooza on day one, and that is strictly because I was not prepared. After an event like the NFL Draft, I like to just sit back and realize how crazy it is that I get to work these kind of events. I hope this video helps you if you're a photographer, if you're a filmmaker, anything in that world. Hope it helps you believe in yourself because you can do it and you can accomplish it. It's not that crazy. There's a lot of different vendors working at all times. Now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the short film that I dropped the other day. Really enjoyed editing that. And that was like my best of the best clips from this event. Thank you for watching. Peace.